in this video i'll be defining sum of divisors and number of divisors so number of divisor is denoted by tau n and sum of divisor is denoted by sigma n now let's define these two arithmetic functions for a positive integer n tau n counts the number of positive divisors of n so this is a tau n function so for example if i take the number n is equal to 8 the positive divisors of 8 are 1 2 4 8 so this means tau of 8 is equal to 4 this is the definition of the tau n function number of positive divisors of n and sum of divisor is written as sigma n this is sum of positive divisors of n in the same example if i now take it as sigma of 8 this means 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 so that will give me 15 so we can see that tau 1 is equal to 1 tau 2 there are two divisors of 2 so this is 2 tau 3 there are again two divisors of 3 tau 4 there are three divisors of 4 1 2 and 4 tau 5 5 is a prime there are only two divisors and tau 6 so for 6 we have four divisors 1 2 3 and 6 itself and the same list we can write down for the sigma also sigma 1 is 1 sigma 2 this is 3 sum of the divisor sigma 3 this value is again 4 sigma 4 this is 7 sigma 5 this is 6 and sigma 6 is 12. now from the above example it is very clear that tau n is always 2 if n is prime we can see because n is a prime and prime has only two divisor 1 and n so tau n is always 2 and same way sigma n this would be always n plus 1 if n is prime because the prime itself will come and then there will be one more number which is 1 will always divide every prime so this number is always n plus 1 and if we consider a representation of a function where summation f of d d divides n so this in this representation we can always say if i want to now write sigma n sigma n is just the count of divisor so i want to count divisor over n so each time there exists a divisor of n so the count will be one added so this is the expression in this form and similarly sigma n now i want to sum the divisor so summation over d d divides n so these two expression are written in the arithmetic function form and again will be used again and again in the other properties of the sigma and tau n function we can see the example of this above case let's take say for example we want to consider n is equal to 10 in this case there are divisors for 10 1 2 5 and 10 and in this case suppose i want to write tau n this means d divides n now there are four divisors so this means it is running over summation d divides 10 and then 1 so sum over all divisor when d is 1 it will take one value when d is 2 it will again take one value when d is 5 this will again take one value and when d is 10 this will again take one value so the so that tau n is 4 and similarly for sigma n now if i want to count sigma 10 this is summation d divides 10 d and similarly when i run now summation over the divisor this will give me this quantity and in this case this will give me 18. now for smaller value it is easy to write down this divisor set say for example now i consider a larger number let's take here a larger number as n is equal to 180 now i want to list down all the positive divisors of 180 and so i want to compute what is tau n so now if i look at the number n is equal to 180 divisors of 180 are we can list out this one one two three four five six nine and so on there are many divisors so it is difficult to write all this list so what we are searching is is there a way to find the divisors and then once we know the divisor we can then sum the divisor to find what is sigma of 180 and earlier we were talking about count on divisor that means we need to know what is the formula for this way so to know the formula of tau and sigma for the general value of n let me to write n as the prime factorization so in this case n is 180 let's write down this into the prime factorization 2 square 3 square into 5 and from there i want to know what is the divisor of n so divisor also to take the same prime factorization this means 2 to the power a1 3 to the power a2 into 5 to the power a3 where there is a restriction on these ai so 0 a1 lies between 0 and 2 because of this power here because 2 can come maximum with the power 2 in the main integer and similarly 
A2, which is the power of the second prime in the divisor, A2 can go maximum again till 2 because of this 2. And A3, which is the power of 5 here, that has a 1 power in the main integer. So, 0 less than A3 less than or equal to 1. Now, taking different choices of this D, we will get the divisor. So, for example, I will take first A1, A2, A3 as all 0. So, let us keep this as 2 to the power 0, 3 to the power 0 and 5 to the power 0. This is 1 because anything raised to power 0 is 1. If I now take any other choice, suppose 2 raised to power 1 I take and then I take all other combination of 3 raised to power 0 and 5 raised to power 0. This will give me 2. If I now vary my combination 2 to the power 0, I will take 3 to the power 1 and 5 raised to power 0. This will give me 3 and so on. So we get there are 18 such divisor and here we have written now the set of divisor of 180 are this. So by taking the same prime factorization in the divisor and running over the choices of A, we can get all possible divisor. So this implies tau of 180 simply by looking at the count of all these possible divisor, this is 18. And from here we can see sigma of 180. Now sum these divisor that I have got in this particular set will give me sigma of 180. But again, summation is difficult. Count was little easy to find it from here by taking the different combination. So now we'll be doing a theorem that allow us to know what is the formula for tau 180 and formula for sigma 180 in general based on the prime factorization that appear in the integer n. So the first thing that we prove now is that whenever n has a prime factorization of the form p1 to the power k1, pr to the power kr, then we say if d is a divisor of n, then d must also take the same form p1 to the power a1 up till pr to the power ar, where each of this ai lies between 0 to ki. So this is a fact that I have used. I have used the same prime factorization that appeared in the integer. And here I have varied the power of ai's maximum till the ki that appear in the integer n. So let's first prove this result. And then we will proceed for the formulas of sigma and tau n. In this result, we want to prove if n takes this prime factorization and n is strictly greater than 1, then the positive divisors of n, d will also take the similar form. And here, if the power a i is, will always be less than or equal to k i. And of course, the least value of a i can be 0. Now, let us prove this case. So, suppose that divisor d is equal to 1. We know that n is greater than 1. So, n have a list of divisor and divisor can be 1 and n itself. And then there are some proper divisors. Okay, d1, d2, d3. So, these are proper divisors. So, let us take when d is equal to 1. So, when d is equal to 1, this is only possible when a1, a2, all powers, this is equal to 0. And in this case, left condition hold true because we are claiming that ai can take the least value as 0. Take the other case, when d is equal to n. So in this case take a1 equal to k1, take a2 equal to k2 and so on ar equal to kr. So in this case as the power ai take the maximum power d automatically become n so that the prime factorization of d and n they are exactly same which is the case and consider the case when d is strictly dividing n or it is a d is a proper divisor of n. In this case, I can write n as d into d dash and both of these quantity d1 is also greater than 1 and d dash is also greater than 1. Let us write d also has a prime factorization because whenever a number is greater than 1, we can have by fundamental theorem of arithmetic that every number can have a prime factorization. So let's write q1, q2 up till qs. And for this also, I'm going to now write a prime factorization t1, t2. Not necessarily distinct. Say, for example, I have considered n as 24 and I can write this as 2 into 12. Now, 2 has a prime factorization that is 2 only, but 12 can have a prime factorization that is 2 square into 3. So, this number 2 is repeating in the 2. So, here I can write this as d and this as d dash. So, there are some primes which are repeating in this. And now, let's write down this expression. We have taken n as the prime factorization which is p1, k1 up to so on, pr, kr and we are writing this as d into d dash. So this means d is q1 up till qs and d dash is t1, t2 up till tu. Now in these prime factorizations, some of the prime factor may repeat. So collecting the equal primes, collecting the repeating primes on the right hand side, repeating primes on right hand side expression what we get is that d can be written as definitely in the form of p1 because on the left hand side we only have the base prime as p1 to pr so obviously 
D will also have P1, P2, P3 up till PR. If there is any other prime and then this is equal to the multiplication of the right hand side, that is not going to possible. So we have A1, A2 up till A3 up till AR. And of course, these AI may be greater than or equal to 0. But the maximum value is of course up till KI. And conversely, we can also write that every member of D, when it's selected into this form, P1, P2, A2, up till so all, PR, AR, I can write down N as P1, A1, up till PR, AR, and then remaining quantities are subtracted from here, P1 minus this, and so on, PR, KR minus AR, so that the total product will become again back to k1 and that is the prime factorization that we have taken it for n so that ensures that whenever there is a d which is acting as a divisor of n so this divisor will also take the same prime factorization which is appearing in the n but the possibility for these power is that they can be zero or they can be less than or equal to ki but they will not exceed the powers that is appearing in the main integer n and hence that result now we are ready to find the formula for tau n and sigma n. This is number of divisors of n and sum of divisors of n. And we know whenever we have n as this prime factorization and there is a d dividing n, then d also take this prime factorization. So the theorem state if n is in the prime factorization p1 to the power k1 up till pr to the power kr, then tau n is given by this expression and sigma n is given by this expression. Now let's prove this result and in the proof I'm just going to consider the prime factorization of n and its divisor. So we have been already given that the prime factorization of n is this. So obviously positive divisor d of n will take this form p1 up till pr and these ai's lie between less than or equal to ki and i varying from 1 to r. As we have just discussed we have proved this theorem in the last video now we can see how many possible choices for a1 do we have because we want to count how many divisor of d of n can take place so that will be giving the, me the value for tau n a1 can take this can take k1 plus 1 value because ai varies from 0 to ki so from 0 to ki it has a1 takes k1 plus 1 value so that means let's see here 0 less than or equal to a1 less than or equal to k1. So a1 can take the value either a1 can be 0 or it can be 1 or it can be 2 up till it can be 1. How many numbers do we have the possibility for a? k plus 1 number. Similarly a2 can take k2 plus 1 and so on ar can take the possible values as kr plus 1 and these are the possibility of the divisors because in each divisor d we can have either the prime p1 or we may have p1 into p2 or we may have the other prime factorization so the total number of the possibility for tau n this is the k1 plus 1 into k2 plus 1 multiplied by kr plus 1 so this proves tau n case and hence i have proved now the first case now in this second case also we will continue the same investigation as a1 takes k1 plus 1 choices so here i want to now sum the divisor because in the sigma n the definition is the sum of the divisor so for example the first divisor whenever d divides n the first possibility of the summation is when p1 to the power a1 will come so 1 is a divisor p1 is a divisor p1 square is a divisor and so on the last term in the first divisor is p1 to the power a1 so we have summed all these divisors it has this much possibility and then we have the another possibility p2 up till so on p2 a2 this is the possibility for the second case and so on we are summing now the last case pr pr square and so on up till pr to the power ar now we know that each of this summation is a gp and in this case we have the common ratio as 1 p1 here the common ratio is p2 here the common ratio is pr these are finite gp and so to write sigma n i'm just using the gp summation formula and this will become p1 to the power k1 plus 1 minus 1 p1 minus 1 and we will be using this r minus 1 form because we know that the prime is strictly greater than 1 and similarly for this expression i will use p2 to the power k2 plus 1 minus 1 upon p2 minus 1 and so on pr to the power kr plus 1 minus 1 
pr minus 1 and has the expression 2 also hold so here in the first case it all depends upon the choices of the divisor and we can look at from the individual choices and here we can simply count that and in the next formula we can sum that choices so that proves our result and so now we continue our same example that we were trying to find it out say for example n is equal to 180 and we have seen that 180 has a prime factorization 2 square 3 square into 5 now by the formula say if n has the prime factorization p1 k1 up till pr to the power kr then tau n is the k1 plus 1 so whatever be the primes power k1 just add one more we have just seen in the proof and this is kr plus 1 and sigma n this is p1 to the power k1 plus 1 minus 1 upon p1 minus 1 and so on pr to the power kr plus 1 minus 1 upon pr minus 1 just apply this formula now here we can see that the first prime have the power 2 so this means tau 180 this will become 2 plus 1 the next prime again have a power 2 so this is also 2 plus 1 the next prime have the power 1 so this is 1 plus 1 and this means it is 3 into 3 into 2 so that is how we got 18 so we don't need to now list down all the 18 divisor we can directly say that there are 18 divisor if we just wanted to know the count and suppose now we want to know the sum of the divisor so this means again by formula the first prime here is p1 and the second prime is p2 and the third prime is p3. So let us write down first prime to the power 2 plus 1 because here it is k1 plus 1. So this means it is 3 minus 1 upon 2 minus 1 into the next prime that is 3. Again add the power to 1 more. So this is 3 minus 1 upon 3 minus 1 and similarly 5. Since this power is 1 here so here it will become square minus 1 upon 5 minus 1. This value is 7 by 1 into 26 by 2 into 24 by 4. And just by cancelling, we can see that this quantity comes out to be 546. And so by using this formula, we can calculate tau n and sigma n.